And thus begins the quest to find Marlock's unit. <laughs> Oh, it was really refreshing this episode, episode nine of Handyman Saito. It really did feel like it's kind of getting back into the comedy bits. It's still keeping that serious tone, so it, it's got a nice balance right now. I think right now with this episode, I think this is a good example of how Handyman Saito can handle having heavy subjects while at the same time still keeping it comedic. <laughs> having the absurdity of how to make Morlock completely 100% resurrect, and that is because he's got to find his little man. <laughs> Apparently not a little man. Apparently a, a, a Laughin Pond size man. <laughs> I love he's like, it's like this. It looks, it's about this size. And then at some point he's like, I really want it back. And he, it's so bad. He pulls Laughin Pond down towards his crotch. It's like, oh, that's so wrong. Really wrong. Really, really wrong. I, I think uh, Laughin Pond needs to report Morlock to the authorities. Cause that was, that was really mean. <laughs> I I feel bad for Laughing Pond at the same time. I I so I love her. She's so freaking cute. I I love Natoyama. So it kind of makes it okay, but at the same time, it's like that's that's just that was just wrong. That was absolutely wrong. But yeah, like I said, really good episode. Really did balance the the seriousness. I surprising that Morlock apparently has some kind of auto resurrect happening. So that's a thing. Uh, it again it, go, it goes to Saito's kind of point in this episode that aspect of you know in my previous life death was absolute like when that happened it was done and it's different here so if I can help Morlock I want to do it like I have the opportunity to be able to bring Morlock back why not I, I it sort of got a little bit into the touchy subject of the idea of like you know why not let him go like why not just let him go what is the point in keeping him bringing him back the dude's like <laughs> now granted we know it's a curse now it's not like you know, he's got dementia or Alzheimer's or something like that. He, he literally just has a curse that could possibly be removed. So it's not like he's out of his mind by his own physical issues. So why not bring him back kind of thing? So really good. Like I said, <laughs> dog running off with his uh, little unit and uh, everybody coming together to try to band together to get it back. I, I, I was kind of surprised. I almost thought that they were going to just explain to everybody what's happening. I, I don't know if they, they explained to Frenlil and Nilia about, yeah, he's looking for his thing. But it was still, still really crazy. The, the <laughs> Riles I'm getting stuck on the size of Saito's. I'm surprised Saito admitted he's like just out of, eh, it's like half. And she's just stuck on it. Half of one, half of it. She keeps thinking about it. And like, Riles is super thirsty. Like she's, she cannot stop thinking about the size of Saito's thing. Um, It was great. It was, it was super great. I loved it. The whole thing with the wolf on the side was fine. I, again, that's the aspect where it's trying to get serious with the storytelling. And so they're having to tell this whole story about how the wolf came from down here to all the way to here. Again, I this is where the the writing's a little weak. It's kind of like the whole assassin story thing where whenever the story gets a little bit serious, it, they're, they're fine stories, but at the same time, they don't feel fulfilling enough. It's like, here's the story. Be sad about it. Move on. And it's like, it almost feels like a waste because you're not given enough time to really care too much about the wolf and what it's going through. And the fact that it found this other wolf and it got to like the wolf and his owner wanted to kill the wolf. It leaves. It's got a puppy. Again, it's like, it's so fast. I don't care. And that's the struggle that I have. So whenever it gets serious, I don't think it has enough time to really sit. On the opposite end, getting serious on the tone of Morlock realizing at some point that he might not get his whole body back. He's weakening. I still think they're going to get it. Like, I, I think they're going to take out this wolf and get his unit back and he's going to be fine. But at least it's showing Morlock is realizing I don't have much time left. Like, I could possibly die. I don't know that the story is going to conveniently give me the wolf right now and we're going to take it out and I'm going to get my unit back. So at least there, it works because he's honestly telling the story about Ryleza, which, again, reveals... That yes, my predictions were wrong, that Rauza is his daughter. It still could be. He could still possibly just misremember thing. I was trying to follow the story about Rauza and really trying to, I guess, see if there's a correlation there. Like, is the story that he's telling possibly the same as what his own story is? It didn't really seem to be the case. It's just this father went off somewhere, got killed. Mother was, they were starving at some point. Wolves attacked his, her mother, died. She was taken care of by this other wolf. And at some point, he finds her and takes her in. So that it pretty much, it implies that, yes, technically, Rauza is his daughter. It's just not his blood daughter. He brought her in, took care of her, and they've always been together, which is really sweet. It would explain why Rauza would see Morlock as a father. It would explain why Rauza uses Morlock as her name. It's technically her father. 
He brought it basically adopted her, and so thus she could take in his name. But yes, like I was saying, having Morlock realize that he does have that mortality, you know, wanting to pass off Rouse as somebody that he can trust. He trusts Saito. Saito has always been at his side ever since coming there and has always supported him. He could trust Saito amongst anybody else. There's nobody else that Morlock would see. I can trust my daughter with you. He's wanting to pass her off to somebody that would take care of him because he thinks he's going to die. And it's really cute. I, I, I really liked it. And like I said, even though it conveniently places the wolf there so they can take it out, they still got to beat it. And they don't have anybody physically that can hold off a wolf. So unless Rouza shows up here in a minute, they're, they're going to have some issues. Didn't care for the fake out at the very beginning that, <laughs> that Morlock became uh, undead. And it just happened to be this other guy the wolf killed that had the same cloak as he did. And so they match. But no, solid episode overall. Looking forward to the next episode. So... We'll see if Marlock gets his unit back in time or <laughs> if he just dies. Again, I think setting up this whole story of the wolf, it sort of having it come back into the picture, it kind of assumes that they're going to take it out and Marlock's going to be fine. So I do want Morlock to stay around. Like I said before, I really do like a lot of the comedy around him. He just has no filters. He'll bring up things like the length of his unit <laughs> of all the things that Wolf ate. That's inappropriate. Anyways, moving on. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Additionally, if you like my content, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all of it. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's animates, pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, a super thanks button down below. Greatly appreciate everybody that supports the channel. And y'all take care.